Yo, Joe! We'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe against Cobra and Destro, fighting to save the day. He never gives up, he's always there, fighting for freedom over land and air. G.I. Joe, American hero! I'll just hold it for you. You're gonna hold it? Okay, cool. Alright, so I am Rob, you are Greg. Greg, and we are here with Mr. Michael Bell. Yes. Legendary voice actor. I'm the cream filling between the Oreo <laughs> cookies here. Exactly. No, so we, we really this is my first three-way here in Pennsylvania. Uh, <laughs> or Philly. That's what it is, Philly. Okay. Well, this is sort of Philly. <laughs> sort of Philly. There's sort of. enough cows on the way It's out like Philly. <laughs> so, Mr. Bell, uh, yeah. we appreciate this very much. We grew up uh, with your, your work. Um, especially Transformers, G.I. Joe, all, all that stuff, 1980s. Could you share your experience working on Transformers, or, or do you have any standout memory of working on that show? I just remember when we got the scripts, and there were so many of them, and we, unlike today, they would just hand you the script and say, this is the character you're playing this. And you would look at it and you go, okay, and you'd come up with a voice. And then uh, Wally would say, okay, um, later on in the script, he'd go, uh, uh, Mike, okay, uh, you're going to play this character. i go, okay, now how am I going to play that different than that character? I'll give him a dialect, I'll back the voice, you know, go back here somewhere, or maybe, you know, deeper, whatever. And that's what we all did. Mm. And it was totally different than anything today. Today you've got to read for one line. Then they just gave it to you, trusted the fact that you could do it, right. sure. which was really... Uh, really lovely to work that way. Did did they have? Um, we've had somebody else we we've interviewed before is um, Bob, uh, Bob Bob Bodiansky uh, from Marvel Comics, and he was actually the one who wrote most of the uh, like the little title cards for each character, the description yeah. on the toys yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So did they give you those, and you kind of had to use those, or you just saw like a picture of that that character? Sometimes you see a prototype, but it doesn't make any difference. You see. If you see a character, his outfit, his hair, maybe he's tall and skinny, maybe he's very muscular, most of them were very muscular, whatever it was, you still have to find something. Mm. You know, you have, to, you have to look for something that's a little bit different vocally because you have to, an actor that does voiceover has to paint the picture. And since we're not movie stars, people don't expect us to sound a particular way, so mm. we had to, we were literally voice chameleons, as it were. And that's what you had to do. Even if you got a prototype, unless the prototype was a character with an underslung jaw, so then you realize you have to speak like this because you have to express the fact that the character has an underslung jaw, so it has to sound like this. But other than that, everybody, you know, if he was fat, really, really fat, you know, maybe he had a sound somewhere over here because heavy people have difficulty <laughs> catching their breath because they've just eaten a huge steak and some, they've just eaten it Bob Evans. And, and you know, <laughs> And that's just breakfast. Now. So those are the things that you have to work on. But other than that, we're all young heroes, so we've got to come up with something different. Yeah. Since, like, particularly the, the Sunbow series, G.I. Joe and Transformers that you did, and even Voltron was a smaller cast, but on those series where there were so many characters, was there like a, like a, a competition in a sense where, I know you all didn't sound exactly the same, but do you feel like, you know, maybe one of the other actors came up with a, a, a certain voice for a character and you said, oh, man, I was going to do that. That's happened. I don't Had know to if differentiate that, a little. I'm or? not sure they came up in Transformers. That, that comes up usually in a, in a read, in a table read. Okay. If you're playing two beggars, and there's, there's two beggars in it, so then you go, okay, I got my beggar. When he gets to me, because it says, Michael, you're the beggar along with these you know, other yeah. two main characters. And the other actor, who also has a beggar, comes up with a beggar and goes, you just stole my beggar. <laughs> <clears throat> you just took my farmer. Right. My farmer was over here, and i got to find another freaking farmer. Then. All but right. as far as our own voices were concerned, we had what we did. And yeah. you, and, but if somebody was a southerner, they'd go, damn, I was going to make him southerner. <laughs> so it's sort okay. of like the, the acting like, yeah. joke where it's like, well... 
what are you doing in this this scene? And the one actor says, I'm playing nothing. Oh, I'm playing nothing. You I'm can't play nothing. nothing. <laughs> you can't play nothing. I'm playing nothing. Exactly. No, it is. It's great fun. It's, it's, it was, uh, and you know, there was, in VO, because I've done a lot of on camera in my life as well, but in VO, there just didn't seem to be, you didn't see any evidence of competition. If there was, it was subliminal or it was internal. Nobody really noticed it. We mm. never thought we were going to, you know, vocally fight. Mr. Bell, so what I'm asking uh, all the different voice actors is obviously you are professional, legendary, you know, have all this experience, but it, 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 what, it, are there ever moments where you walk in and you're, you're, you're looking at the script or the toy or whatever and you're just like, I'm voicing a toy, what am I doing here? Or, or, or is it always like, a, like you're so committed and... Always, always committed. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody says, here, you're a piece of toast, you've got to be the voice of toast, <laughs> you're a turtle, I go, okay, physically, what does a turtle look like and how will that manifest itself vocally? I, I, te I have um, anybody's interested that wants to do vocal work, uh, and learn how to create a character, uh, go to michaelbellvoices.com and you can click on, uh, this is shameless, shameless advertising. I teach um, a master class right. on digital on how to create characters from an acting standpoint. And then I have a class that I teach, so you learn from the class that I'm teaching. When they screw up, you go, oh, okay, now I'm not gonna do that. And thankfully, I have a partner who also teaches the commercial aspect in terms of commercial voiceover. She's brilliant. So it's a big, you know, it's a big uh, three hours for, it's really a couple of bucks. It's not a lot of money, considering I charge a lot of money and she charges a lot of money for one-to-ones. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, other than that, you know, that's all I can tell people. It's just something you should have some acting background. It's not just a voice. You know, there are great mimics out there that could never act. And they would hire them and, you know, okay, yeah, Rich I think Rich, yeah. yeah. And yet you had, what's his name, who did the Riddler? And, um, Gorshin? Gorshin was brilliant. Yeah. And he could do that. Uh, Robin Williams can do that. Uh, but there are very few people that that can create that character and a different voice. Uh, can I say, since you 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 know you're you go back to really the beginning of the cartoon era where it was product sort of intertwined and, yes. and all that. Um, we asked Larry Kenny this at one time about that because there's there was a lot of I mean we were too young to realize that but there was a lot of backlash on that where people were saying. You know, GI Joe. You know, they can't do that. It's you know, it's 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 like war profiteering. You can't sell toys on a cartoon, and because it was against the law at one point. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Certainly, that's changed radically. <laughs> well, I mean, they, you know, sometimes they start with the product first, right? And they say, let's build, let's build this animated series around it. They do, yeah. Now, of course, you know, if if somebody discovered a market for naval for they would do a naval foof series. You know, it's just the the bottom line is that it's the has become the, the product first, and they'll throw everything against the wall just to see what sticks. You know, now, it makes no sense. The other thing is, um, and you know, we we hate that this happens, but it's like nowadays the only way that they will make a feature film, an animated or CGI feature film, and all of the main characters are noted actors on screen, yeah. and it's none of like the way that you guys were, where you guys could go in and do an animated film and it would be nobody that you would ever know from live action and it was fantastic. And now it's like, it's like man, we'll just get Mike Myers and... and, and well, let's go people. back to the days when Disney did Pinocchio and Snow White and Song of the South. They were not names. It was wonderful. Right. As a kid, I, it never occurred to me to say, oh, that's Lana Turner. You know, who cared? You know, right. It was John Wayne. No, they, they wouldn't even think of doing that. Now, of course, it's become a huge market, and uh, bottom line is they'll get a big star. I've done, uh, <clears throat> you know, I did Rugrats. When they did the movie, I said, good, they don't need stars for this. And you know, somebody started to get little spots for no. celebrities, and, and they take up your time. Sorry, yeah. celebs, take up the time. They really don't know the medium, uh, and it, it becomes much more tedious for them and for the producer because they have to have them do it over and over. We go in, we do the job, we get it out. What bothers me is that when they did the first um, G.I. Joe, 
uh, the on-camera G.I. Joe, the live-action G.I. Joe. Mm. Mike Bay said, uh, uh, I'm going to get actors. I don't want voice people. Of well, the Transformers. what the yeah. hell did he think we were? I'm sorry for Transformers. What the hell did he think we were? <laughs> what, what, what was that? Was that a butcher? Or was it a part-time baker? He's, he's we, can't, we can't <laughs> defend it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but even like in the G.I. Joe, uh, the, the animated movie, which... I don't think that didn't, remain, didn't even Sunday. make the, the theaters. If I recall. But no. they had Don Johnson in that character, which, and the worst part about it was, it was almost like they had to, to spend all this time in the film just throwing Don Johnson's character in there that nobody wanted to see. She warned him in there. Didn't want to see him. Even if, see, the thing about Don Johnson, he was a big star and on camera, handsome guy, hero, and then when you heard him, his voice was a little smaller. <laughs> And he sounded a little bit like that. If you really listen to it, uh, forget it's Don Johnson. He's got a smaller voice. Sorry, Don. That's interesting. Uh, and when they they called me and they said we'd like you to do the show, do the movie, and I said okay. And here's my price. That's my fee. We all have fees. And they said, well, we're not going to pay that. And I said, well, you know, I'm sorry that I'm not asking for a ton of money, but I'm a central character. Duke's a central character. Uh, but um, and then okay. they killed him. They get somebody else, and so they got back to me, and then they killed me yeah. uh, and I said uh, sort of. is that why? well I came back didn't I? It sort of semi died nah. you were in a coma I was in a coma <laughs> and I came back in community <laughs> right. Right. and I said why don't you put Don Johnson in a coma he's not very good <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was in a coma uh, and so be it you know it's, uh, it's well. okay Mr. Bell who, who influenced you? who were your voice acting here. See the, I, or acting. Or acting. Acting. It was acting, acting yeah. Because when I was a kid, there weren't any really voice actors. I mean, I listened to the radio, which is, I'm sure most people don't even know what that is. Uh, <laughs> there were radio dramas that I listened to all the time and radio shows on Saturday morning. I was glued to the radio. Um, but I didn't have any heroes, particularly in radio. My heroes were movie actors, Cary Grant. Randolph Scott, who wasn't even a good actor, but he was wonderful to watch. Um, actress, you know, Eva Gardner. I mean, these were just people I, these were actors. These, these were my, my, that's my era. Mm. And years later, of course, uh, now, of course, it's totally different. But uh, you guys grew up with television. Right. So your heroes with were you? from television. <laughs> you grew up with me, absolutely, yeah. And, and you turned out okay. We did. Yeah, 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 I think. pretty good. Yeah, considering pretty good. people that know me say, I don't know how people are so healthy having heard you all those years. Let me well, ask you, so you, again, you have tons of experience. You've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, does it get more difficult to do certain voices as somebody ages? Does the person's voice change or, or does that not come into play? Well, not necessarily. <laughs> I think I sound exactly as I sounded when I was uh, playing Duke. I mean, do you hear a difference? I certainly no. don't. Yeah, your tubes. Do you run into that problem your pipes, as, as yeah. a director? No, 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 no. They're not, they figure, look, they look at the thing and they go, hey, guy's fucking circling the drain. Is he going to get through the series? You know, they don't look at me and say, can you do this? Or And they'll audition me and I'll hear, they'll hear, they go, yeah, it sounds okay. I don't sound the same. I don't still have the same sharp sound, but I can play the I can play a character. I mean, you guys heard Community. How much different did I sound than Community is Duke? You know, give me a couple of days rest yeah. and uh, give me a green apple, and I'm fine. <laughs> All right, good. You know, I'm good. 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 That well, shouldn't affect it. When they when they brought you back on that newer GI Joe as the uncle of Duke. Oh no, I was uh, Duke's. I was Duke as an old guy. And I was Duke, and, and uh, Jason Marsden, who's so good, yeah. played my son. He played young Duke. Oh, okay. So I played oh, old so Duke, both he was Duke. young Duke. Yeah, we both, we, he, well, he was Duquette, <laughs> and I was Duke. And uh, BJ, who was, um, uh, who was Scarlet, Scarlet, Scarlet yes. played my wife. And that ah, was, yes. yes. That was <laughs> so much fun. Thank you, Jenny McSwain, for bringing us back. That was so super. Yeah, that was cool. And Jason, I said, and very funny thing about it, when they said we're going to be doing that, and we're going to have um, we're going to have on camera people there. We're going to have them do a whole big thing on Entertainment Tonight. I thought, great. I went out and got my old army uniform, slapped the sucker on, bought some new boots, you know, the camouflage, the whole crap. And I show up, and there's no camera crew. And I look like the <laughs> schmuck of all time. Everybody else is walking around in freaking flowered shirts. Uh, right. 
and T-shirts, and whatever, and I'm standing there in this uniform. <laughs> they could just get like a with black boots ordinary on. camera. Just it's a camera. Get a shot of me, guys. I'm in the whole drag, and I'm full uh, army drag. Uh, it's crazy. Well, we appreciate it. Yeah, well, everybody <laughs> in the cast appreciates it. Hey, looking good. Whoa. <laughs> He's Not living in another world. Crazy guy. It's like, I mean, I don't do uh, costumes. You know? <laughs> right. You know. That's it. My favorite character of yours from that era was Lance on Voltron. Oh, cool. Because he was he was a wisecracker, and that's yeah. how I always was growing up. Yeah. Just from the area, we just that's how we were. You just smart ass. Yeah, that's yeah. How, <laughs> you were a smart ass. That's exactly how we were. Yeah. Um, and that, so he always I always clicked more with him. Is he closer to you personally, or? Lance would be, yeah, Lance would be uh, prowl a bit, but mostly Lance, yeah, just because I was able to toss stuff out as Lance. Yeah. Good. And we did Voltron, you know, we never saw the film because... Uh, it was patched together from other series. Just vocal. It was Japanese. Right. So we were told we'd get the script, and that's, and I didn't know what he looked like, I just had, oh. and then the, you had, if you had three seconds or eight seconds, you'd have to do it within eight seconds. And they'd go, I'm sorry, that yes. was seven and three quarters. You'd have to do it again until you got it. And in those days, you played everything. So myself, Jack, uh, Peter, uh, Lenny Weinrib, Neil, and uh, BJ. And we had to play every character. And after a while, BJ could only play so many girls. And they'd say, well, <laughs> who can we get to play girls? And everybody turned to me, because I had the lightest voice. Ah. Yeah. So now I look at these every now and then, they're on Zoom or some television yeah. matter what it is, and I watch myself. And I'm like, oh my God! Were you the witch? That? Were you the witch or was that BJ? No, that was BJ. Okay. BJ was the witch. I was, witch. Oh, I was, I was uh, Sven Lance and yes, the old, Sven. the old, I think uh, BJ's father yeah. of the court, something of the king of the court, whatever oh, it was. Right, the, the character. Oh. I forgot who he was. Yeah, exactly. And I was all these little girls going, oh no. <laughs> oh, somebody ran me over. Oh, my God, they killed me. You know, because the Japanese killed everybody. Yes. <laughs> and they had to cut out all the nude scenes. Because when the Japanese killed you in those films, you were naked. <laughs> what? Yeah, you, so you see all these things. You see people running naked. And you see women's breasts. And you see people getting knocked mm. down. And in a cartoon? A, in the car. Oh, Japanese. Oh, yeah. Oh, they, as I recall, somebody said they align that kind of thing with the kind of violence and nudity and sexuality. And it uh, keeps everybody calm in Japan. They don't have that much pornography, I guess. I don't know. Wow. All right. Hey, whatever works. So anyway, we, and we did it that way. We wound up just doing voices, not even knowing what the hell we were doing. <laughs> yeah. Having fun. Having fun, That's having a it. great time. In fact, they would. They finally had a. They had to separate Peter Cullen and I because I just always played. And he would just fall apart, and they found us okay, you guys cannot work together like children. They made me work in a separate room from everybody else. Let me ask you, so speak, this will be my last question. Spe speaking of Peter Cullen, let's just say for some reason he can't do Optimus Prime anymore. God forbid. Or, 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 you know, for some reason he's off somewhere doing something else. He can't do Optimus Prime. Yes. Is that something you could do? Or? God, no. Oh, no. no. To do Optimus Prime, you'd have to... You'd have to give me another set of testicles. <laughs> no, there's no way. When so mine each, drops, so maybe. Each, but each maybe. character is that is, is unique to that. Oh, pattern. he's got that wonderful set of pipes. Same with Frank Welker. They got yeah. those great set of pipes. There's that. I think uh, there's a wonderful actor named David Soboloff who has a set of pipes like that. Those great, deep, wonderful, powerful pipes. But uh, Peter has. Uh, kind of sense of humor that works with that character. He's got a wonderful sense of humor. He's got that standing. Peter also is in Rescue Bots as well. Right. Yeah. Right. Plays Actually, Optimus and Rescue Bots. For real, my last question is now. Uh, you liar. Because if mm. I, right, what you were saying before about mimicking and impersonating. Yeah. So if I impersonate Frank Welker's, for example, his Megatron. Please don't. The gravel, Wouldn't that be whatever. funny if we suddenly heard, <laughs> and he fell over <laughs> with a big blood spot hurting out of his <laughs> But when I when I imitate that or try to imitate that, that's such a gravelly, aggressive voice. I do it for three seconds. <coughs> well, it was vocal. How, how do the how do they how do the actors do he, voices like that? Pipes have a lot to do with it. It's not just pipes; it's his acting ability as well. But because he's got the pipes, he also he does that. Uh, 
character from uh, Mr. Gadget? Oh, yes. Dr. Claus. Dr. Dr. Claus. Oh, yeah. I tried that. I couldn't <laughs> do that. Are you kidding me? There was no way I could do that. I mean, I thought, how, Frank, how do you do that? That's so crazy. It just it shreds my voice. I yeah, can't. and absolutely. And I, when I was doing Thunder, and I'd have to yell out Thunder the Barbarian, just... I said, I got three Thunder the Barbarians. That's all I got in <laughs> Okay, because I'm riding a horse, Thunder the Barbarian, because I won't be able to work next week. So would they have to recycle? Uh, no, you still have to come in and do it fresh. Okay. No, there's nothing in the library at all that I know of. My last question is is on the, the, which was great that Chow Factory did this. I mean, this was worth the release in themselves. When they had the round table with you guys on the Transformers. I brought everybody together. Yeah, was, was you? That was yeah. Wow. They called me and they said, who can you get together? And I said, I can get blah, 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 blah. And they said, okay, that's great. Can they all come together? I said, yeah, let's talk money. I said, well, we don't <laughs> right. have any money. I said, well, then you don't have any actors. I said, you got what you got, but I got to tell you, there's nobody's going to do this for free because it's just not how life is. And he said, okay, I'll do this, that, and I'll give you one of those sets. And we said, okay, fine. Yeah. So it was, it was moderate, mod, very moderate sum, but everybody was willing to get together and play. And it was fun, as you saw, everybody talking and shooting. Oh, that's, that's worth its weight in gold. That's really, Anything that's really been done. And of course, they gave series. me the set, which I, of course I haven't played. And I said to my daughter, I'd like to auction this. She said, you auction that off, and you better not close your eyes when you go to sleep. That's mine. <laughs> uh, that's mine. I said, okay. I have so much memorabilia. I said, but you have so much stuff. She said, no, that's mine. And my favorite part of that was when, when all you guys were talking about Chris Lotta and his yes. his acting and just spitting, oh, just yes. over the top. Over the top, wow. Chris. Over well, that's Starscream voice. That's another one that I try to do that, and I'm like, Nobody three seconds later, I'm like, <laughs> I, I can't think, do I it. think Charlie Adler does it in something. I think he does it in, in the on-camera G.I. Joe's, if I'm not mistaken. Charles Adler. Yeah, well, he, he also Adler. had that shrill voice. He could do he, those shrill Charlie voices. Charlie can do that. He can hit that high pitch. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, uh, that's way too hard. Yeah. Way, <laughs> are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I'd have to wear a girdle. <laughs> well... Michael, this is fantastic. I mean, you're it's our, a pleasure. It's a pleasure, our hero. And it's yeah, thank you so much. Very thank appreciated. You. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you so much.